Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear God, for this time that we have to come together. Father, we want to image you as faithfully as we can, dear God. And one of those ways is abiding in community. We see you abiding in perfect community, dear God, and we, we want to be like you, dear God. We want to represent you well. So I pray, dear God, that as we continue to come together as connect groups, that you would knit our hearts together. Father, that we would, we would deepen relationships, that we would care for one another when the opportunities arise, and that we would be, that we would be your hands and feet, dear God. I pray also, dear Lord, that over these next several weeks, dear God, that we would experience you in a way that we have not experienced you before. There would be experiences, dear God, that affirm the words that we've been hearing for such a long time, and that it would be an experience that builds our faith and the faith of those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. This is the Experiencing God introduction session. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm going to do your agenda, and thank you, Brother Isaac, for helping me with the PowerPoint. I appreciate it. So um, if you look up here, you'll see that we're going to cover the following items. We're going to do a course overview. We're going to talk about course commitments, course materials, what to expect on a weekly basis, and finally, uh, the group covenant. So on this, uh, the next slide, uh, you have a worksheet I handed out. At the top of the worksheet, it says Experiencing God. Is worksheet one. So if we read here in John chapter 5, verse 17 and 19 through 20, it says, My father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. I tell you the truth, the son can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees his father doing, because whatever the father does, the son also does. For the father loves the son and shows him all he does. Yes, to your amazement, he will show him every, <laughs> he will show him even greater things than these. So underneath that, you have some questions. So this is going to be uh, interactive, if you will. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a few moments to read over those questions and to come up with some answers. Here's a pro tip. The answers are located in the scripture that we just read. So take a few moments. All right, if you haven't finished, that's okay. So we're going to, on the next slide, who is always at work? <coughs> you can yell it out. It's okay. The father, right. The father's been working up right up until now. Now God has me working, right, the son. So how much can the son do by himself? Nothing. And do nothing on my own initiative. Next slide. What does the son do? What does he see the father doing, right? I do nothing on my own initiative. I watch to see what the father is doing. And four, why does the father show the son what he is doing? Okay, don't whisper. Because he loves us. Because he loves, right, because the father loves me. Loves the son. He shows me everything he is doing. So on this next worksheet that you have, these are the seven realities. This is basically the meat of what we're going to be going over in experiencing God. So You'll see that it's one, and then it works counterclockwise. So you see one, God working. So God is always at work around you. And then next, number two, relationship. God pursues a continuing love relationship with you that is real and personal. Isn't that amazing? God pursues a continuing love relationship with you that is real and personal. God always wants to meet with us. He always wants to speak with us. He always wants to be involved with us. 
We just got to make time, right? I know you all do that because y'all are good Christians. Number three, invitation. God invites you to become involved with him in his work. So this reminds me of, you know, when I used to see my dad working, I didn't know what I was doing, but I would want to help him because I'm like, wow, man, look at my dad doing work. So I want to join him in that work. So the awesome thing about our Heavenly Father is that he invites us into his work. Number four, God speaks by the Holy Spirit through the Bible, prayer, circumstances, and the church to reveal himself, his purposes, and his ways. So not only does he invite you into his work, but he wants to speak to you, right, through the Holy Spirit. The fifth one is crisis of belief. God's invitation for you to work with him always leads you to a crisis of belief that requires faith and action. This is where the rubber meets the road, right? It's tough. You know that God is saying, go, and you're like, okay. First, let me get a sign, okay? Now, if this bird flies this way, and then he flies the other way, and then he lands here, then I know it's you. And then when the bird does that, you're like, okay, Lord. I, the second test that I'm it's like, man, so we go through a crisis of belief, which is normal, right? Because we're human. Number six, you must adjust, you must make major adjustments in your life to join God in what he is doing. Sometimes that's tough. And number seven, you come to know God by experience as you obey him and he accomplishes his, he accomplishes his work through you. How many of y'all want to experience God? Yeah? Okay. If you don't, then this is not the place for you. <laughs> You're in the wrong place. But if we want to experience God, because God wants us to experience him. He doesn't just want us to learn about him academically, but he wants to, he wants us to experience him. And so that's, that's what this study is all about. So if you would submit yourselves and do the work, you're going to see what God can do through you. And it will be transformative. It will be amazing. It will be life changing. You got to commit. To experience God, you will never be satisfied merely to know about God. Knowing God comes only through experience as he reveals himself to you. That's from page 70 uh, in, your, uh, in your workbooks. So we want to experience them. Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 18, we see Abraham, and we see, it, we see this whole cycle play out. We see Abraham, and God calls him and tells him and speaks to him and says, okay, go to the mountain, sacrifice your boy. Now, if there's any moment, right, to be like, all right, Lord, like, I need a bird. I need, like, something. I need, like, for real, for real, is this you speaking because this is crazy. You know, I waited a long time for this boy. You know I did. But we don't see that in the scripture. We, what we see is we see Abraham saying, yes, Lord, up until the point where he's about to kill his boy. I mean, he's laying up there. But then what happened? God provided. And so when, I, when, when, we, hear, when we hear and we sing those songs about Jehovah Jireh, it's like, man, God is my provider. And now Abraham experienced Jehovah Jireh in this life and death situation where he was about to go ahead and sacrifice his boy. And right at that moment, what did God do? He provided. Very good. Good job. He provided, right? So he came to know him as Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. So there was a time where, you know, we had, we had a Jehovah Jireh moment in the Banos family. You know, um, there was a, I had lost my job. And, um, it's funny thing when you lose your job, like the bills still keep coming. You can call them and let them know, hey man, you know I lost my job. The payment is due. So I'm like, Lord, what am I gonna do? But I remember clearly, it was like three o'clock in the morning. I'm like, God, what what should I do? So He gave me direction, and like this was like clear direction, and I'm like, Lord. 
what? <laughs> okay. Um, so I had a crisis of belief, right? I could, I heard from God clearly. And then it's like, okay, what's the next step? Like, am I going to believe or am I going to be like, no, nah, I'm good. But I chose to believe. When I chose to believe, I experienced God's provision throughout the whole time that I had to go back to school and do all that stuff. And, and we didn't miss a payment in anything. It was amazing. I, I came to experience. I mean, I see, I see Abraham experience God as Jehovah Jireh, but I myself came to experience him as Jehovah Jireh in my own life. And so, like I said, we can read about it and we can talk about it. But when we experience God, it's like we know that we know that we know that we know. So what will be covered on this next slide? I'm going to go ahead and show you what we're going to cover over these next 12 weeks. First, we're going to do God's will and your life. Then looking to God, God pursues a love relationship. Love and God's invitation. God speaks parts one and two because, believe me, there have, been, there have been people that say that they hear from God and it's like, anytime I, I, anytime I think about people hearing from God, I think about the story that Bishop tells about the lady that drove down in her U-Haul and rolled up into Benny Hinn Ministries and was like, God said, really? <laughs> Did he really? Yeah, I don't think so. Um, a crisis of belief, which we've been talking about a little bit, adjusting your life to God, experiencing God through obedience. A few weeks ago, we learned how to spell love. Do you guys remember the new way to spell love? Mm, I don't have any candy for you, but you know what? You did a great job. God's will and the church, kingdom people and experiencing God in your daily life. God wants us to experience him daily, right? It's not just like a once in a while thing. It's not just a Sunday thing. It's not just, you know, when, when you feel like it. God wants us to experience him all the time. So you might ask yourself, why experiencing God? Why are we doing this? Well, I want, I want to make sure that we develop relationship with, a relationship with God to recognize when he is speaking, Super important, all right? We want to recognize where he is working. And we want to join him in his work. We don't want to do our own thing, but we want to do what God is doing, just like Jesus. And we want to experience him working through me and you and us together, collectively. Because when we experience him that way, our faith is built. When we experience him that way, the, the faith of those around us is built. And that's what we want. Amen? Amen? All right, so some of the course commitments. So the elements in the course. So it's going to be daily, individual, 30-minute uh, assignments. So there's five in each unit. So there's seven days in a week. So you get a little grace, right? So, But there are five 30-minute sessions that you want to complete. Now, I know some of y'all are like amazing and I get that, but don't do all five of them on the same day. Don't do that. And the reason for that is you want to, this is about cultivating a relationship, a love relationship with your Lord and Savior. And that happens over time, right? It's a daily thing. I mean, I wish that I could go to the gym one day and like spend all day there. I'm willing. I'm willing. And then like, boom, shredded, rip. Amazing. Beach ready. But the problem is that it don't work that way. It doesn't work that way. There's so many elements. You got to be daily about it. You got to get up and you got to go. And then you got to say no to cookies, to brownies. That's the Devil, see, and over the next 12 weeks, we're going to learn to discern the voice of God and the voice of the enemy talking, talking about, like, coffee. You got to cut that out, brother. I was comfortable. Now I'm about to get hot in here. Mm. And then a uh, couple with the, with the sessions, once a week, you're going to be getting together as a group where you guys get to share with one another what God is doing, how you're experiencing him 
uh, weekly. And so it's, uh, that's going to be an awesome time. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, there's also a group covenant. So the covenant uh, in the groups is you, you committing to do the work, right? Nothing is more frustrating than when you prepare, right? And everybody is prepared, and then you get there, and people are like looking at you like, oh, yeah, I was only able to get to like one. Okay. Okay. What are we talking about then? What, I mean, what? We can look at each other, and, but this is about being committed, not interested. I heard that earlier today. It's like there's a difference between being committed and being interested. Being committed, like, you're, you're all in. Like, nothing's going to get in your way of getting this stuff done. Interested is like, yeah, no, I'd like to, you know, at some point learn a little bit more. But, like, you know, if something else comes up. Oh, I'm so sorry. I wasn't able to do it. I wasn't able to make it. I'm sorry. So we want to be committed to doing the work. We want to be in prayer for group members, for the leaders, and also for the church. We want to make sure that we attend and participate in group sessions. This requires a degree of transparency. So, you know, we want to make sure that we, we open up to one another. And the thing about opening up is that it's, it's confidential. So it's not just like, you know, sometimes some people may view prayer meetings as like gossip sessions. To be like, hey, so so and so is going through that. <gasps> I didn't know. Wow. Wow. What else is happening? <laughs> and so it's like, no, what, whatever's happening, whatever people are sharing, it stays within the group. So attend and participate in group sessions also means that you participate. Don't don't be just kind of sitting out there lump on a log. Um, we're going to coax you out of your shell. But that's because we want to see how you're experiencing God throughout the week. Now, there are several groups, and those are all located in Realm. Afterwards, even during the break, um, you guys can go ahead and check those out. Many of you guys have already joined a group or are leading a group, so that's awesome. Um, now, we can go ahead and take a break now if you guys want, or we can plow through. Plow through. All right. Good. Here we go. Now, getting ready for your first group meeting. So we have the course materials, right? Uh, individual study, and then also uh, the, the spiritual journal. So we're going to go through that. So on this next slide, if you haven't already gotten your, um, your workbook, how many of y'all have gotten your workbook? Okay. How many have not gotten your workbook? Okay. So if you want to take out your phone right now. This little QR code. I want to take a moment to thank my boy, Minister Hector, a.k.a. Jingle Man. <laughs> jingle? The jingle, the Core Faith Blend jingle, you haven't heard that? At, at the end of the, okay. Yeah. So um, if you haven't already, you can go ahead and click on that. The Spiritual Journal Notebook, on page 271 of the Participant Guide, it talks about having a spir spiritual journal notebook, and it talks about having it divided in certain sections. So the sections would be testimonies, what God is doing in your life and the lives of others, uh, daily review. So after you go through your, um, your daily uh, study, there's a section underneath there uh, to write down how God is speaking to you. We'll cover that in a little bit. Um, but if you need more space, you can use that journal to go ahead and write a little bit more. And then it also... Um, advises you to have a section for a weekly review. So as you think about everything that God has been doing, speaking to you throughout the week, you can um, write in there um, what God is doing on a weekly basis. 
and then spiritual markers and prayer requests. So the spiritual markers would be like, man, God, I know that God spoke to me here and he's leading me in this way. And um, that kind of stuff is important, especially when you're trying to make decisions, trying to follow what God is, is telling you to do and the direction that he is leading you in. Um, so the spiritual journal is, it's not required, but it's highly encouraged. And the reason for that is because we are forgetful people very forgetful and so sometimes when we you know go through different seasons in our lives um it's awesome to look back at like what god has done before right and say wait a minute if i experienced god in this way for example as jehovah jireh my provider if you provided then and i'm going through this season where it's like man i'm struggling how is he not going to provide now? And so spiritual journals are important in that sense where it's a, it's a record of like, man, not only do I read it in, in God's word or he did it in, in his word, but he's done it in my life and in the lives of, the, of those around me. So super important. Everybody got the link? Good? Yes? Okay. Let's move on. What to expect weekly? Scripture memorization. I know. Sometimes your mind may be like a sieve. Stuff goes in and it just seems to flaw. You can't, it doesn't stick. It doesn't stick. But there, is, uh, there are some tips and tricks um, into memorizing the scripture. But if you turn, if you have your participant guide and you turn to page three, you'll see that an example of what I'm talking about. At the, um, on that page, and I'm going to go ahead and show you guys on this one. So you'll see at the beginning of every unit, you have a beautiful page like this. And on here is your memory verse for the week. So you'll have also cards in the back of the book that you can perforate cards that you can go ahead and tear out on your participant guide. And carry that around with you in your purse or your pocketbook or your pocket, or you could just take a picture of it and carry it on your phone, put it as your screensaver. Be like, all right, just to help you memorize. Why is that important? Well, because it's God's word. And we know that God's word is truth. And the truth is what transforms us, what changes us. And every time you get together weekly, somebody's gonna ask you to go ahead and recite the verse. So it's a good idea to memorize it. Daily assignments. Each unit is divided into five daily assignments. So only study one at a time, please. Only study one at a time. Cultivating intimacy with God takes time, so don't rush. Make sure you carve out that time. There are going to be moments where it's like, oh my goodness, this came up, that came up, the other thing came up. But remind yourself, you have committed Nothing is going to get in the way of getting it done because it's important. And just like with everything else that we prioritize, whatever we prioritize, we make it happen, right? And so if you really want to experience God throughout this time, make it a priority. So on page 11, this is a sample of the, uh, one of the learning activities. If you have your book, you can turn, turn there. Uh, if you don't, just go ahead and look up on the screen. So it, um, this is an example of the interaction between the content and the learning activity. So here, uh, you're going to go ahead and read, or you read, if you do everything Jesus tells you one day at a time, you will always be in the center of where God wants you to be. That's a question, but I didn't read it that way. Let me read it again. If you do everything Jesus tells you, tells you one day at a time, will you always be in the center of where God wants you to be? Question mark. Check your responses. So what you would do is you would read that and then you would check the responses, right? Whichever one you feel like, okay, it answers best. So no, Jesus does not guide people specifically. How many agree with that? No takers. No, God gave me a brain and he expects me to use it. 
I say no too, but sometimes I, I'm, I'm, that's a yes. I live the yes, but I know that it's a no. Uh, next, it is much wiser to wait until God tells me all the details before I begin moving my life in a particular direction. Ooh, that's a tough one. Ooh, Ooh that's a tough one. The last one, yes, if I follow Jesus one day at a time, I will be in the center of God's will for my life. How many of y'all agree with that one? Yeah? I know, I'm so shy. I think so. I don't know, maybe. Yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> so after you think about the question and you look at the answers and you select one, at the, after that, you're going to go ahead and see what the author's answer is. So in this case, he says, when you get to the place in your life where you trust Jesus to guide you one step at a time, you experience tremendous freedom. You ever been on a vacation that somebody else plans? All you got to do is the next step, right? Right? You just show up and then be like, all right, so today we're going to you're going to get on this bus and we're going to go to the next destination. OK, so you get on the bus and you come out, you're like, wow, this is amazing. Well, that's OK. You spend the time there and they say, OK, next we're going to go eat something. Like, wow, that makes sense because I'm, I'm getting hungry. So everybody back on the bus and get on the bus. And then all of a sudden you go ahead and drive Then you get out and wow, amazing lunch. That's awesome, isn't it? God wants to lead us in that kind of way. And we, you know, sometimes we're like, oh, no, no, but are they going to have what, like, I like? Or I, I heard that there's another restaurant that I can go to, so I'm not, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and <laughs> let me get in a taxi. And, and then you find yourself in trouble, kidnapped. <laughs> Wish and Troy was with you <laughs> to help you. I'll go anywhere with you. I, listen, anywhere, my boy. All right, so back to this. If you don't trust him to guide you in this way or this way, what happens if you don't know the way you should go with your life? You worry every time you make a decision. You may become immobilized by doubt. Anybody else been there? Immobilized by doubt? You can't decide? Mm -hmm. That's like when I ask people what they want for dinner. Immobilized. <laughs> Doubt. Uh, I don't know. What do you want? I don't know. This is not the way God intends for you to live. I have found that when I release my way to God, then I immediately respond to everything he tells me each day. He gives me plenty to do to fill every day with meaningful meaning and purpose. If I do what he says, I am in the center of his will when he wants to use me for a special assignment. My primary concern should not be, what should I do with my life tomorrow? But what does God want me to do today? As you follow Jesus one day at a time, he will keep you in the center of God's will. That's amazing, right? Isn't that good? And this is just a little section of what we're going to go through. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. All right, so here are the overview for the units. Units one and two is a broad overview of God's works, of, of the God, what? Man, I cannot, I can't spell. It's a broad overview of how God works in the lives of people. In units three through nine, greater detail on each of the seven realities of experiencing God, which we went, uh, the, the worksheet that you guys have, worksheet two in your hands. Units 10 through 11, Go over the church and the larger body of Christ and the kingdom. And then unit 12, the last one is how to apply the truths to our daily lives. Are you excited? You sound excited. <laughs> uh, so I was telling you, I was talking to you guys earlier, uh, a little bit earlier about the end of day review. So every day you're going to have this little section, um, page 13, if you have the workbook. Um, and it's a, a review. It's a review today's lesson. Pray and ask God to identify one or more statements or scriptures he wants you to understand, learn, or practice. Underline them and respond to the following. So this is why you need that time, because you need time to just sit and see how God is impressing on your heart. So you can't rush it. You just got to let it happen. You got to take the time. There's no shortcuts here. And frankly, I don't want a shortcut. 
I want to spend time with the Lord. So daily review will help you to listen to what God may be speaking to you. Complete it daily. Say daily. Daily means like every day. Every day that you're doing this, you got to go in and complete it. I know. Heavy revy. Uh, running summary in the spiritual journal. So like I said, if this section right here isn't enough room, because I know some of y'all love to write. You do. You're like, let me just, I need to fit like, anyway. Um, so you can have more space in your journal. So that's why I, I um, encourage you guys to, to do the spiritual journal. But uh, going back to the, the daily review, it'll ask you, what was the most meaningful statement or scripture you read today? Reword the statement or scripture into a prayer of response to God. And lastly, what does God want you to do in response to today's study? Experiencing God. So the group covenant, I want to talk a little bit about that. So this is on page 270. So some of the high points um, are that you agree to come ready for group discussion. That means that you did all the work, okay? It's no fun when you do all the work and then other people don't do any of the work. Because then it's like, man, I, I came ready to share. I came ready to hear others because it's not just about you sharing, but it's about hearing how God, how others are experiencing God in their lives. It's encouraging. We have to commit to praying for your group members. Remember, we're trying to grow together. That's one of our, our core commitments here at Core Faith Church. So this is an opportunity to do so. We want to commit to attending every session. Say every session. Unless you're dying. Okay, in that case, you'll be excused. I'm just kidding. It's just, if, if you have an emergency, I get it. But we want to go ahead and make sure that we make up that session. So we want to, we want to make sure that we, we make those kind of arrangements. Because this is so good. And the study is so rich. But if you never do it, then it doesn't. It doesn't. Let me give you an example. I uh, so my daughter years ago got um, bifocals, and when my when the doctor said, "Hey, you got to get bifocals," um, I was like, "Man, but she got to wear them for, for forever." He's like, "Well, no. There's a little kit that you can buy for a hundred dollars, and if she does the exercises using the kit, then she won't have to use them." So I was like, "Wow, that's fantastic." That's great. She does exercises, and he explained the whole thing to me. I was like, all right, let's do it. I had some money left over in the FSA account, so I was like, all right. The money's already spent anyway. We might as well buy it. So we bought it, right? Brought it home. I was like, oh, man, so excited. We spent the money. We had the stuff. How many times did she do it? Zero. Zero times. So guess what she's still wearing? Bifocal. So we had the stuff. We went ahead and did the whole thing. We bought it. We would, and then it just, there was no change, no transformation, still in the same place. Don't do that, okay? Commit to doing the work. It is rich, rich, rich. But if you don't do any of the work, then it's all for naught. Transparency. I want to make sure that we're honest with one another, that we're open with one another, and that we're, we, we keep things private. private. Confidentiality, again, that speaks to that. Please don't share outside the group um, things that people have told you in, in confidence. That doesn't build trust. It tears it down. We don't want that. Commit to praying weekly, weekly for leaders and church. Um, Prayer moves mountains when you pray, okay? It's, there's, there's no use in knowing that truth unless you actually practice it, right? Prayer is important. And there is actually a dedicated time uh, for that during our group sessions, but we also want to do that in your individual um, daily sessions. So, end of the show. Let's experience God together. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you.